Okay, welcome back. Good morning again. Uh, I'm here with you today for another lecture. Uh, this one's on section 3.1, quadratic functions and models. We are going to handle the modeling portion on Wednesday when we go through example problems of these things. Um, so for today, it's just the theory of quadratic functions. Uh, we've already looked at these things before uh, in terms of just them being a certain kind of polynomial. So we'll be looking at them a little bit more in depth uh, looking at some of their properties, uh, and rightly so, I, you know, they, they come up quite often um, in lots of real world problems. So here we go, let's go ahead and jump in. 3.1 quadratic functions. So we've looked before at polynomials. Polynomials are uh, any function that has coefficients. Okay, so I'm going to list them a n, a n minus 1, dot, 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 and then, so we'll have like a zeroth number, we'll have a first number, we'll have a, an nth number. These are just numbers. We call them coefficients, right? Uh, and each of these coefficients are multiplied by a variable here, in this case x, to the power indicated by the, uh, the coefficient here. Uh, but we don't usually write this x to the zeroth. Any number to the zeroth is just one, so we don't write that one usually. But these things are just, you know, uh, things like this. Take any old number, multiply it by a power of x. Has to be a whole number power. This is a polynomial. When you add all those terms up, we're going to be looking specifically today at only the n equals 2 case. So only things that look like this, a x squared plus b x plus c. Okay, so n only goes up to 2. And then because we, don't, <laughs> because we only have three letters, I'm using b, a, b, and c instead of a2, a1, a0. Okay, so these are quadratics. Anything with a formula exactly like this, a number times something squared, a variable, plus a number times a variable to the first, plus a number. This is called a quadratic, or a polynomial of degree two. Um, we do require, first, uh, that these things are not all zero, right? So if, we, if a was zero, this is not a quadratic. B can be 0, C can be 0, but if A is 0, then this is not a quadratic. If A is 0, then this turns into this. This is a line. This is a quadratic because it has an x squared term. This one's a line. If A is 0 and B is 0, and but C is not, then we still have a line, but it's horizontal. This one has a slope. The quadratic has lots of slopes. Okay, so now that we've got that sort of uh, explanation of what these things are, um, the graph is what we usually call a parabola. So we've seen the graphs of quadratics before. Uh, here's just x squared. So that's, that's the graph of a quadratic x squared. We call it a parabola. Uh, and here we see that b equals c equals 0. Right? We, we, uh, we just set b and c equal to 0, and we get just x squared. Um, OK? So it's totally fine if b and c are 0. That's fine. But a can't be. What is a? A is 1. Right, this is 1 times x squared. All right. Um, something to note here is this point here. It separates the parabola into two symmetric halves. This point um, is called the vertex of the parabola. It doesn't matter where your parabola is, if it's you know way over here, 
we still call this point at the bottom or the top the vertex. And it doesn't matter if your parabola is upside down or right side up. Whatever that biggest point is or that littlest point is, we call the vertex of the parabola. Um, what's el what else do we have here? Vertex. Um, oh, line of symmetry. I said the, the vertex sort of is the point uh, that divides your parabola into two symmetric halves. They're symmetric about the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry is a vertical line that cuts right through the middle of your parabola and each half, this, is symmetric to the other half. Okay, what is the equation to the line of symmetry? Oh, line on, did I write line on? Oh no, line of symmetry. Um, what is the equation to it? We're gonna find that out. But it's x equals something. And it's a constant. It's just a number. What number is it? It's whatever this intersection point is with the vertex. And I'll tell you exactly how to compute that here in a bit. Okay, I think that's all of the vocabulary we need for quadratics. Just looking here, I think that's it. So, um, <clears throat> Let's talk about something we talked about for lines, forms of quadratics. So I'm talking about the formula. What are the different forms of quadratics? Your, what I wrote before and what you usually see is something called the standard form. This is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the standard form of a quadratic. It's, uh, you know, it's the highest degree term on the left, and then the terms, the degrees of the terms decrease from left to right. Uh, there's no factorization. There's there's nothing else. It's just, it's just each term added together with the highest degree on the left, lowest on the right, and it's just filtering down like that. Um, the next form is vertex form, and this one's really actually quite nice. Uh, it is a times x minus h squared plus k. This one's really, really nice because the vertex form tells you exactly the location of the vertex, the exact point in space where it is. So I'm going to write that here in, in blue. The vertex form explicitly says the vertex, I'm going to say V, it's a point, is the point H comma K. Standard form does not explicitly tell you that. Not at all. But if you see a quadratic written in vertex form, you can quickly pinpoint on the plane where the vertex is. You just have to rewrite your, your vertex form like this. You might have to worry about a sign here or a sign here. And then you're just literally reading it off of that. Okay, and so let me look at a couple of quick examples of this. So y equals x plus two minus 3. And this one is x, I'll give you another one, y2, this one's y1, y2 equals x minus 2 squared plus 3. So I've just changed the signs, but I'm going to quickly graph these things for you. These are in vertex form. Uh, this one says explicitly on the right that the vertex is the point 2, 3. And I can just read those numbers right off because this has the exact form of the above form, of the above uh, expression. We've got a minus sign after the x, and we've got a plus instead of a, a minus for the k. Whereas y1 has things sort of flipped around. 
the x plus 2 is different than the x minus h. So we need to rewrite that, right? It's, it's x minus a negative 2. So that gives us the x-coordinate, it's minus 2. Similarly, we've got a, a minus 3 there, but it should be a plus 3. Right? Or a plus something. So how do we rewrite this? We write plus a negative 3. And that gives us the k. k is the negative 3. With a little bit of rewriting, it's not too bad to take something that's close to vertex form and putting it explicitly in vertex form just to find that that vertex point. So here we go. What do these graphs look like? Uh, I'm going to graph y1. I won't graph y2. It's the same thing. Uh, the vertex is that point that is the biggest point or the smallest point. We've located it. It's negative 2, negative 3. Here's the vertex. And then this is, is literally a translation. There's no scaling. We learned about that in a previous section. There's no scaling factor here. There's no scaling factor on the x either. So this is just a parabola that's been translated left and down. So it looks exactly the same. It just is moved. That's y1. Okay, so I found the vertex, it's at negative 2, negative 3, and then I graphed a parabola as usual. So we're going to deal with, um, with this sort of thing. Uh, we're going to deal with this sort of thing for a little bit here. So uh, we're going to look at two cases. So I'll rewrite this vertex form here. We're going to deal with two cases. Case one, if A is positive. If A is positive, then your graph looks like this. Looks like a happy parabola. Right? Um, if two, A is negative, then your graph is going to look like this sad parabola. Okay. These two things tell you also another really critical thing. Um, so let me just move this down. If you've got a positive number multiplied by that x minus h squared, not only do you have a, a happy parabola, but the vertex down here is a minimum. That's really handy to know. Specifically, what is the minimum? Well, you plug in h, and you get k. The minimum value of that parabola is k. It never goes below that height. If you've got a positive a, and you know the vertex is at h, k, the parabola never drops below k. It's always above it. If a is negative, then the vertex up here, it's a maximum. And what is that maximum? Well, it's the same thing. f of h is k. In other words, your parabola starts at that height k, and it drops down. It never goes above it. You can determine that just by looking at that one number a. If it's positive, it opens up, and you've got yourself a minimum at k, that value. If it's negative, then the parabola opens downwards, and you've got a maximum at your vertex at a height of k. Uh, really kind of handy things, which shows you the utility of, of quadratic form, uh, of the quadratic form, uh, vertex form. Standard form does have its niceties too, uh, and so we'll talk about one of those really quickly. And this, uh, oh, 
sorry, before I get there, I talked about the line of symmetry. Uh, so this will be three. The line of symmetry has equation. It's, I said I'd give you explicit equations for this. Um, so if you've got a, a, a parabola, or sorry, a quadratic written in vertex form, the line of symmetry has the equation x equals h. Right, it goes right through that vertex. So of course it has the same x value, <laughs> h. Um, so this one's the super easy case. Sorry, I wanted to, wanted to mention that. Sorry to make it seem like an afterthought, but I just remembered it. It literally was an afterthought. The harder one is the standard form. So standard form. So how do you find the vertex for standard form quadratic? This is a little bit more difficult, but it's not impossible. And so it, it really just relies on something called completing the square, which I think have we done that in this class yet? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know that we've done that, but I, I, I suspect that we have. So this, I'm pretty sure we have. So completing the square, we're just gonna do that on this form now. I can say y equals if you want, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna complete the square on this right side. We're gonna try to turn this into vertex form because if we can write this in vertex form we can say exactly we can just read it we can say exactly where the vertex is in terms of x and y coordinates so let's do that then so if you remember completing the square what you're going to do is this process that relates to really these things and you're going to you're going to try and use this fact that if you have x minus something squared it has this really nice form it's x squared minus 2ax minus a squared, uh, plus a squared, running out of room. It is a really nice form to it. So we're going to try and get this to look like that so that we can factor it that way. We're going to do it by some fancy adding and subtracting. So I'll run through it. <clears throat> do I expect you'll be able to do this on your own uh, generically like this? No. But with, ex ex with explicit examples, with real numbers, yes, you should be able to complete the square. So here we go. First process, first step is always to factor out that a. So we take out this a, and we get x squared. And what's left here is a b over a, x. Right? If we distribute it back through, we'd multiply by a, and that a would cancel. And that's where I'm going to end it plus c. I'm not going to factor the a out of the c. Just going to factor it out there. Because remember, we, we don't really care what um, what we have there. We, we just cared um, the, you know, that we can factor this thing. So next is we use that special form. And the special form is this. We've got a x squared, I'm going to leave some, some space here, plus b over a, uh, I'll leave the space at the end, plus b over a, x, plus c. We need something here that sums to 0, right? So we're going to put two things here. We need, we need to make sure that we're adding nothing in. That way we're not affecting anything. But what we also need to make sure here is that when you when you uh, take two of these things and add them together, you get b over a x. And so that gives you the exact result. So it's 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 just this. It's you take half of that, b over two a. Right? If you take that and you double it, you get exactly b over a. So we take half of that and we square it. But one of these needs to be negative. That way the whole thing sums to 0. 
So let's just say plus this and minus that. And now I'll fix my Okay. Now remember this <clears throat> this form is really 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 quite close to what we had before. We, I said if you take x I said minus, but we can do plus as well. This has a really special form. And we're going to compare it to what we have written right here. If you double A, here A is B over 2A. If you double that, what do you get? So if you double it, you get B over A. If you square it, you get b over 2a squared. So it turns out that this here has the exact form of x plus a squared. So we're going to factor it like that. a times x plus b over a at 2a squared. That's the exact form. Minus b over 2a squared, that's just this leftover piece, close it off, plus c. We're almost at vertex form, almost. So we just keep going. Uh, we're going to have to distribute this over to this and to this. That way we can sort of recombine things because as it stands we've got we don't have vertex form quite yet. We need to get all the constants out of this big parentheses. So this gives us a times x plus b over 2a squared which is pretty darn close to vertex form already minus a times b over 2a squared plus c. Okay, now we're close. We just need to change some signs. x minus h is what we were supposed to have. So minus a negative b over 2a squared. So here, this is our h. Negative b over 2a. And then I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to flip this, flip this sign, flip the uh, uh, order here. Plus c minus b over 2a squared. Here's our k. It's plus c minus b over 2a squared. Right? I can I can group that if if I want. That's that's fine. That's our whole k right there. So if you have a, a parabola in standard form, <clears throat> what's the vertex at? Here you go. It's this point. The vertex is the opposite of b over 2a comma c minus b squared over 4 a squared. And that's it. We've written our standard form into vertex form with the explicit purpose of finding the vertex. We still have the case where if a is positive, we have an upwards open parabola, and so this is a minimum value. If a is negative, we have a downwards opening parabola, and that y value is the maximum. And in either case, and here's the promised formula, the line of symmetry has equation x equals the opposite of b over 2a. The vertex is always in that central location for the parabola. So if you just take the x coordinate, that's going to have that's going to give you the equation for the line of symmetry, and that's it um, for parabolas. We're going to go through several examples of this on Wednesday during class uh, from eight to nine twenty. So I hope to see you then. Um, I can tell my kids are waking up, getting ready to go for the day. Uh, they've been up. I think mom's just been letting them watch a show here, but. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, we'll talk about some examples of this on Wednesday. Uh, 
once you've got these formulas, once you've once you've worked through figuring them out on your own, once you understand what they're saying, it's really a, a it's quite a mechanical process to go from a given equation in standard form or vertex form. It's just a mechanical thing to give the vertex or give the line of symmetry equation or the max or min value. It, you know, once you understand these things, you literally just read these things out, right? <laughs> so you just put the numbers where they're supposed to go. And so it doesn't, it's not that difficult to do that. The difficult thing is understanding where they come from. And I hope this video helps for that. Uh, if not, uh, shoot me an email or come to office hours. I'm more than happy to go through it again with some explicit examples as I go along instead of just this theoretical stuff uh, without examples. But um, I'll see you then or I'll see you Wednesday in class, okay? Until then.